Hello everyone, this is the first day of the International and we are going to talk to Black, who is present at this International as the coach for uh, Team MVP Hot 6. Hi Black, uh, how is your experience so far? And uh, I would like to talk to you about actually coaching. Can you please tell us what you do for um, uh, as a coach and what's your roles in the team? Um, I think the role as a coach is to prepare the team like uh, watch their games obviously when they practice you prepare them for like future tournament games by um, telling them their mistakes analyzing their replays and then going through every mistake player by player so they actually realize what is wrong because many times like a mistake becomes a habit and you don't realize it anymore by yourself because you just do it every game and then you need like a third person like, like a third po person kind of view where you, uh, where he like points it out, what like mistake you made, and then you can like slowly fix that. Um, then also obviously the strategy, like you do research on other teams, you research what they really like, what their playstyle is, and then you you think about how you can counter their playstyle with your own playstyle, like what heroes you use to beat them, what heroes are strong against them, what heroes you are weak against, and everything. And um, on top of that, I think. The coach is also there for, for example, the, the team is like arguing or something. And then the coach should be the one to like resolve that argument. Like he should be there for the team to, you know, kind of act like... It's like a big, big daddy, right? Yeah, he kind of acts like a babysitter for them. Like he wants everybody to be happy. He tries to make sure everybody gets along well. And like that's the main purpose of the coach. <coughs> right, so basically you watch their games, you analyze <coughs> their uh, play style, the mistakes, and yeah. uh, do you um, discuss it with every player or you kind of communicate more with the team captain? How, how, how it's going? Uh, usually, it's uh, most, mostly I speak with the team captain, but if one player has like a certain issue, and then I go to the player and focus on him, and then like, you just sit behind him for like a whole day, and you just focus on him, on the mistakes he does, you load up the replays, you go through the mistakes that he did with him, and then slowly but surely he will like work on fixing them. But mainly it's talking to the captain, what he thinks about it, because obviously if you see like a mistake, you want another opinion first, because some people can get really emotional when it comes to mistakes. Like there's like always a big ego with Dota players, so you always want as many opinions as possible before you confront the mistake. <laughs> right, and do you think uh, the coach, uh, should he be like, you know, the professional player with some kind of achievements or he has just to get to some rank to understand the game? Uh, does he need to have some sort of, uh, you know, the, the name for the players to obey him or how it's gonna work? Like, it's a very good question because I think the biggest issue of being a coach is having the respect of the players. Because mm -hmm. if you don't respect your coach, you won't listen to him you will be like, he will say, yo, that and that was really bad. And he's like, what do you want? You're like 3K MMR. Like respect is definitely like the most important part of being a coach. And I'm not really sure how to earn respect because most of the coaches I know, they have been professional players before or like big managers and big teams, like something really like high, highly valued. So I'm not really sure how to earn the respect as a newcomer, but like that is definitely the the biggest obstacle as a coach. Well, I guess uh, it combines not only the Dota 2 achievements, but it also like a kind of personality, your yeah, reputations sure. and stuff. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty much sure that you don't have these problems in the uh, Korean team since yeah. uh, they're kind of um, maybe new to Dota. And can you a little bit tell uh, me uh, how the team are like what kind of personalities they are? Yeah. Um, in general, we have one really quiet Korean player, and obviously Jarex, who mm -hmm. is Finnish. He's also pretty quiet, unless he plays. Like, like he makes a lot of in-game calls, but if he doesn't play Dota, he's a pretty quiet person. And then we have uh, three people who are very emotional about the game. So like if you. For example, if they make a mistake, they will let other people know and like shout about it <laughs> and everything. It's like obviously not the best attitude, but you know, 
not everybody is perfect. You, you need emotions and it just happens. Like after the game, you just like talk about it. You kind of like need to keep it in check. And like they're working on it. And I think we, we've gone a really far away so far. All right, I know the story that actually uh, you were supposed to join the team and the player, yeah. but eventually you started <coughs> to do perform like a coaching duties, and Girax was invited, and uh, I think he said that yeah. you uh, suggested him to join the team, right? Yeah. So what was the story? How, 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 how did it go? Well, it's kind of like a long story. What happened is, um, VG dropped me in like the middle of February, and I was like under a lot of time pressure during that time. I only had like one week to make a decision, and both MVP and Mouse approached me, like, a couple of other teams too, but those were like the two biggest. And then I don't know. I just thought about what's best for me. I, I spoke to a lot of friends and everything. In the end, I decided to join Mouse, but obviously that left the free spot in MVP Hot Six and Jarex as well as MVP. They're both like friends of mine, mm -hmm. so I was like, eh, maybe I can help both out a bit. So I like brought them together, and then they started talking, and it all worked out. That sounds like a very cool move of friendship, I would say, <coughs> and. Uh, I'm really glad that you're still good friends and uh, made it to this event uh, as a coach. And you mentioned that you're going to continue your Dota like a career as a player, right? Yeah. So, okay. Um, actually, there's going to be a uh, time before the next measure, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, there are some rumors that you have to lock the uh, lineups by the 1st of September, yeah. including the um, s uh, su subs, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Subs, yeah. yeah. And uh, are you going to like uh, be the one to join the full team, or are you gonna be fine with getting a stand into some team? How is gonna work? Mm, I think depending on what team you're on, you might be fine with being like a sub for a while, like if it's like a really really high tier team. But obviously, every everybody wants to be like in the start five. Yeah, that's why I'm asking. Like, like, like pretty much like in basketball or football or whatever, you always want to be able to perform and play right off the gate. And that's definitely my goal too. But I can't predict too much yet, because obviously after TI there's gonna be a huge wave of changes again. Oh yeah. And until then nobody can really predict what's gonna happen. But I'm definitely looking out for a team and trying to get back as in the scene as competitive player. Because like, even though being a coach isn't bad, it, like I'm, I'm thirsty for competition. Yeah, I know that you're kind of a person who likes the challenge and yeah. you always that kind of a guy. Yeah. And is there any, are there any players and newcomers in uh, South Korea who can get to the teams like MVP, I guess? Mm, I'm not so sure. If you're trying them out or? I, I'm not so sure about Southeast Asia, but uh, in Europe there's this one really promising guy, Miracle, I think is his name. He has been like, I think he's even over 8K MMR by this point. And he's playing really, really well. Like I watched some videos of him, some replays. Like, he is really, really good, and I think after this TI, he's definitely going to find a spot in a, in a really good team. But concerning Southeast Asian teams, like, I couldn't really play much, because mm -hmm. I was mainly focused on improving with the team, so I can't really say anything about that. All right, and uh, there's also some people say that uh, this um, new format of Dota 2 <coughs> professional scene, like with uh, stand-ins, yeah. it's going to implement the Tier 2 teams uh, in a little bit uh, special way, since because uh, most of the prominent uh, players from the two teams would yeah. just go as a stand-ins to top tier teams, and uh, this way we'll have like top teams with seven players, yeah. and then like um, very let's say uh, not like let's say mediocre teams. Yeah. Do you think it's right or it's not gonna work that way? I'm still very interested in how it's gonna work with the sub players because. I don't think I've ever heard so far, except one time with EG during TI4, I think, where an injury actually prevented a player from playing a big tournament. So I'm not sure how many teams are actually going to add like substitutes to their team, because there's always, you know, like a bit of taste. Oh yeah. Like, like let's say you're a sub and you're playing really well, and then you like swap out someone on the main team. That guy's gonna be like really, really mad and everything. It's like, 
I don't know. I guess it's good and bad at the same time, but I can't really predict yet, yet like how it's gonna how affect it's gonna the team out. or something. Yeah. I, I just hope it like doesn't destroy promising T two teams because the yeah, team that that was the main issue and main yeah. concern of many players. I, like I just hope it doesn't happen because the scene definitely needs new blood and that's the way like new blood comes. With well, hopefully yes, and we yeah. had experience of many players now at this TI like from Vega Squadron, from the Sumail from last year, so yeah. the new new blood is coming yeah, and sure. it's good. Just needs to be discovered and... So, uh, coming back to this um, discovery, the coach obviously, does he have to uh, look for new teams or it's like you know, a job for, for new professions like a team scout, like in professional sports, what do you think about it? Just right now, for example. I think you should always like have a look out on like up and coming players because you never know maybe after this TI somebody suddenly decides he wants to quit playing or something you, sh you should always be ready to be able to find a player to replace someone uh, obviously if you have five like working players you shouldn't think about replacing anyone but there's always this like one percent chance that something bad can happen and you should like always be ready for the worst case scenario so I definitely think scouting for new talent should be done like all the time all right yeah. well i think that sums it up and um, yeah. i wish you good luck this tournament hopefully yeah, we'll be following the um, performance of both mvp squad so far yeah. thanks for the interview and yeah. uh, good luck Thank and you don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel and um, uh, vote for uh, new interviews comment on these ones and have fun thank you